Mahaprabhu gave instruction to Haridas Thakur, don't worry, you cannot go inside. From here, when you see the Jagannath temple dome and the flag flying on the top, you pay your obeisances to the dome and the flag. The original Siddha Boko tree, and it is particularly characterized by the fact that there is the shell of the tree. Dandavat Maharaji. Okay, donation depot, Maharaji. And uh, this tree had only the shell, not the substance within the trunk. And for many years, then it is living by just that outer part of the tree, like the bark and the outer part of the tree was coming and nourishing the rest of the tree. And this is one of the characteristics that this tree is so old and basically almost, you can say, impossible to live, but still living. And it was under this tree that uh, Haridas Thakur, that he chanted his rounds of his japa with 300,000 names daily, three lakh. Haridas Thakur, he was brought up in a Muslim family in Bengal. And the, uh, he got some name and fame, not because he wanted it, but naturally name and fame come to the devotees. And so some fame came to him, he become fa became famous in Bengal, but he was, and he was preaching Hare Krishna, he was distributing Hare Krishna Maha Mantra before Mahaprabhu's appearance. So very, he was old when Mahaprabhu, I mean the older generation when Mahaprabhu appeared, he was already chanting Hare Krishna and distributing Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. But the Kazi, the local Muslim ruler, did not approve because he was Muslim and they say, why are you Muslim con like converting to Hindu? This is not good. And so they giving very heavy chastisement. And the chastisement he gave was Okay, you stop, but he didn't stop. He kept on chanting the Maha Mantra. And finally, then the Kazi said, you stop or we shall beat you in 22 marketplaces with whipping. That time, very strong penalty. And Haridas Thakur replied to the Kazi, fearlessly he replied. He said, you may cut my body up into pieces, bit by bit by bit by bit but I will never stop chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And this way the Kazi said, okay, then I've given you your chance to redeem yourself and again be Muslim. But he, Haridas Thakur strongly, with full faith in the Maha Mantra, said, you can cut me to pieces, but I shall never stop chanting Hare Krishna. Then this way the Kazi said, okay, take him and beat him. And so one marketplace, another marketplace, Day by day in different marketplaces, he's been whipped by the strong um, chastisers, those who meet out the uh, penalties. And normally after just one, two, three marketplaces being beaten by these men with these whips, people would die. But for 22 marketplaces, he is unaffected. He's not feeling the pain. He's chanting Hare Krishna and tolerating everything. And then finally, those strong men who are whipping him, they told him that if you don't die, then the Kazi will kill us, kill us, because we, our duty is to whip you to death. And now 22 marketplaces and you are still alive. What is going to happen to us? We are going to be killed. Then Haridas Thakur said, so he will kill you? Okay, then I will die. Then. There and then he lay back and died, and he had all the symptoms of being dead. They check him, they check the pulse, they check everything. He had all the symptoms of being dead, and they even took his body to the Kazi. And they say, here he is, we are presenting you the dead body. Then the Kazi, very happy, 
then they are going to give burial in the ground because he was Muslim, considered as Muslim. But then the Kazi and others there, or another Kazi who was a co-Kazi, Gurudev said that he was assistant Kazi. Then he said, no, burial in the ground is too good for him because that is what is done to the Muslim. They are buried in the ground and they think that then their soul is going to some better place. But he said, no, be like the Hindu, throw his body into the Ganges. So they uh, seen it got, yes, this is some insult for him. This is their thinking. They threw his body into the Ganges and then he sailed off, flew, not flew off, sailed off, <laughs> floated off down the Ganges. And then uh, down the Ganges then, he brought himself back to symptoms of life. He brought himself back to life and he came to Shantipur. Shantipur, he then stayed in a cave in Shantipur. A cave means some hollowing, but he stayed there in a cave and many things happened in his life. And there, Maya Devi, the personification of all illusion, came to attract him and for three nights, she's coming night after night, but Maya Devi finally understood, oh, here, this is Haridas Thakur. He has, he is completely aloof from this material world. And he has got the holy name surcharged with Krishna Prema. And Maya Devi then begged to Haridas Thakur. I've received the name of Shiva before from elsewhere, etc. But please give me the, the name, give me initiation into Krishna now. And then this way Haridas Thakur initiated Maya Devi into chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And other, many other stories and about the ladies also, there was uh, in the area where he was staying in the cave, also that area, it was controlled by Muslims. And there, there was one envious uh, ruler, and he was very envious of Haridas Thakur that he's getting some fame. And he sent along one prostitute, young lady prostitute, to go to uh, entice him, so that that way they can show, oh no, he's only bogus, he is fake, this way. But that lady prostitute came to him and the first night Haridas Thakur said, yes, but I must finish my japa, I must finish my rounds first. And then the night finished and then still he said, oh, please excuse, I could not finish my rounds. Again, if you like, you can come back tonight. And then again he came back a second night, still he couldn't finish his rounds. The third night when she came back, then because she'd been hearing the name of the Lord from Haridas Thakur, then her heart completely changed and then she surrendered to Haridas Thakur, told him, oh, I'd been sent by the local ruler to come to defame you. But instead, now I understand who you are, such a great personality. Please forgive my offenses and give me your blessing. And this way, Haridas Thakur told to that prostitute, okay, then you leave your house, you leave everything, you leave all your opulence, all these things, you come and stay in this cave, you worship Talasi Devi, and I'm going to go from here. And this way, then also that lady, she became a great devotee, and people would come to see her with offerings. So she was never without any food or anything. The Vaishnavas, understanding her glories, came and looked after her in that place. Anyhow, when Mahaprabhu the time came for his pastime to take sannyas. Then he left from Nabadeep and went to Katwa. In Katwa he took sannyas and then came to Advaita Acharya's house in Shantipur. And that time, long story short, that time then Mahaprabhu, he asked his mother, he said, I have, I have uh, taken this sannyas on the spur of the moment and really I am greatly indebted to you for everything, for your uh, everything in this way. So you, do you have any request of me? And she asked Mahaprabhu, I have one request. If you will stay in Jagannath Puri, then we will always get, I will always get news of you because devotees are coming backwards and forwards from Puri. I know you cannot stay 
in Mayapur in Navadip because after taking sannyas you cannot stay close to your family this way. And so everyone will criticize you if you stay here. But if you stay in Puri, I will get news from you from time to time from the devotees. And this way we have, I'm feeling some closeness. And Puri and Navadip are two rooms of the same house in that way. So Mahaprabhu, he said, yes, mother, I'm listening to you. I shall follow this directive of you. I shall stay in Puri. That will be my base from now on. But when Haridas Thakur heard that, his heart was feeling very broken because his identity as Muslim in the regular worldly view and this Puri Dam, especially this Puri Dam, is not a place for Muslims, especially that time. Very strongly it is the place of the servitors of Jagannath. The, you could say Hindu section, the Vaishnava section and the servitors of Jagannath, the Hindu section. And India then was very caste conscious, very caste conscious. So that time then no Muslim would be allowed to stay within this kingdom of Lord Jagannath. So Haridas Thakur is feeling very sad indeed and he's feeling, now Mahaprabhu, my Lord, my Master, he's going to take shelter in Jagannath Puri, stay in Jagannath Puri, but I will not be allowed to be in Jagannath Puri. Then he's made this prayer to Mahaprabhu, he said, what will be for me now? I won't be able to maintain my life, this is such sad news for me that you will be in Puri. But Mahaprabhu said, Haridas, don't worry, don't be in anxiety. I will pray to Jagannath that he will give you a place in Puri. And then in due course, when Mahaprabhu came to Jagannath Puri, then uh, he made arrangement, after praying to Jagannath, with Kashi Mishra. Kashi Mishra was a landowner and a wealthy man here in Jagannath Puri. And Kashi Mishra gave the Gambira, the place for Mahaprabhu's residence. And Mahaprabhu, through Mahaprabhu's prayer, then Kashi Mishra also gave this place, this place which is near to where Mahaprabhu stays, near to the Jagannath temple, but a little separate. He gave this place for Haridas Thakur. And Haridas Thakur is feeling always, well, I am Muslim and I cannot mix freely here, I cannot go to the Jagannath temple. However, every day Mahaprabhu himself, when he is living in Puri, he is coming to see Haridas Thakur. The Lord is coming to the devotee. We are thinking, oh, the devotee always going to the Lord. But every day, the Lord Mahaprabhu is coming to Haridas Thakur. And this is this place where so many pastimes took place. And Mahaprabhu also arranged for the prashad of Haridas Thakur. This way Jagannath Prashad is coming to him, the Lord is coming to him, everything is coming to Haridas Thakur and he is chanting his 300,000 names of the Lord, 192 rounds every day, this way here. Then Rupa Goswami was also considered as Muslim because he'd been working in a very top position in the Muslim government, practically as Muslim, you could say. Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami's elder brother, similarly, practically as Muslim, because they'd been serving in the Muslim government. And so, when Rupa and Sanatan would come here to Jagannath Puri, they came here with Haridas Thakur, and together they took shelter at this place of Siddha Bhopu. So, this, in brief, is some history behind Haridas Thakur coming and staying here in Puri at the Siddha Bhopu, where we are. And then many pastimes took place here with Mahaprabhu coming every day. And Mahaprabhu said, anybody who will chant and dance here must get Krishna Prema very soon. So this is also so many promises are given about so many activities in devotional service. But we want to give our honor, our respect, our remembrance and in glorification of Haridas Thakur, pray that he may help us in our chanting of the holy name. 
And one other thing to note is that Haridas Thakur, Krishna arranged for him, thank you, Tree, Krishna arranged for Haridas Thakur to be the Nama Acharya and uh, made that arrangement that he was Muslim, considered as Muslim. And in, in a very caste conscious society, it is most noticeable because the Brahminical caste, the Brahmins by hereditary, like you are a child of a Brahmin mother and father, then hold. He is Brahmin because of birth. He is Vaishya because of birth. He is Sudra because of birth, etc. This was very strong at that time. And the Brahmins in, were more or less claiming everything to do with God and religion is in our hand. Nobody has access. It must come through us. But it, 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 for the clean, pure, actual Brahmin, then yes, all qualities they have got and they are aware of Brahman, which is why they are called Brahmin. But simply by caste, by birth, then this is never endorsed within the scripture. Just as a doctor, your mother may be a doctor, your father may be a doctor, but you may never have gone to school, never studied medicine, then how can you be a doctor? So similarly, by qualification, not by birth, then this way, Mahaprabhu selected in his Leela a Muslim, somebody considered as Muslim, Haridas Thakur, to be the Nama Acharya, to show that it is not something of caste and creed and birth, that it is independent of bodily identification. And presently in the Sampradaya, we were mentioning the other day about the grand festival of Srinivas, uh, uh, Srinivas, Narottam and Shyamananda Prabhu, which took place in Ketri. There, they established Janavi Devi. Janavi or Janava? Janav, 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 the, the wife of, is Janava and the Ganges is Janavi, is it not? Yeah, sometimes they call it Janna. Okay, but okay, Janna Devi, to make it separate, not the Ganges, but the <laughs> wife of Nityananda Prabhu, she was established as the head of the whole of the festival. So, in many ways, we are seeing it is not by bodily birth, identification, by caste, by creed, all this of tradition but it is by qualification and quality. So this way, Haridas Thakur was the Acharya, the perfect example of chanting the holy name, preaching the holy name, distributing the holy name. And Mahaprabhu selected, that will come through, apparently, Muslim caste personality. Also, Rupa, the top of our Sampradaya, that Mahaprabhu established as the head of the Sampradaya and told to all, to Prabodhananda, Sarasati and to others who were senior to him in a gathering here in Puri when uh, Rupa came on one occasion. He said, I have selected Rupa, please you all give your blessing to him that he, at this place, at Siddhaboko, at this place, when they are all here. Ah, because it was when Rupa came here also. Yes, when he could understand the inner meaning of the verse Mahaprabhu was chanting and his ecstatic madness during the Ratriyata festival. And then when he came back to his hat, so we can imagine this was Dhanidas Thakur's place, his hat, and then Sanatana Goswami would stay and Rupa Goswami would stay. He will have some hats. And then they would all take a bath and then come back and reside here. And then he brought that verse some inspiration came into his heart, so he wrote the verse, basically explaining and presenting it very beautifully and clearly what Mahaprabhu meant. And he means Rupa, Rupa yes, Goswami. Rupa Goswami yeah. Because that poetry sounded like a mundane poetry, like an exchange, loving exchange between a boy and a girl, mundane girl. So everybody was wondering why Mahaprabhu is chanting that verse. So general people, they didn't understand. And it is said that only Swarup Damodar, he knew the meaning of that, and Mahaprabhu himself, of course. So when Rupa Goswami returned from the festival, he actually wrote, composed the verse explaining the inner meaning of Mahaprabhu. And then, having composed it, he put it 
attached hat. So you just put it there maybe to dry or just to keep for safekeeping. And he went to the ocean to take a bath. Mahaprabhu appeared with Swarupa Damodar and then he noticed there was a leaf. And then he picked it up and he noticed how very beautiful writing. And Rupa Goswami was well known for a very how beautifully he would write the script. It was very beautiful. And then Mahaprabhu read it and then he asked Swarupa Damodar, how is that possible? How would we how would he know? the true meaning of it. And then Sarup Damodar Goswami answered, the only way that he would know is that you would reveal it to him. So by your grace, he could understand what you were singing, the meaning of that song you were singing. So that has happened here. And shortly after, remember, he was composing the Satyabhama Devi, she appeared to him and asked him to compose the Natakam, which is the theatrical performance. It's a drama, basically, theatrical drama. So Rupa Goswami, he is composing two Nadakam, Vidakta Madhva and Nalida Madhva. And he brought, one day he brought all the devotees, all the leading devotees, Ramananda Rai, Swarup Damodar, Paramananda Puri, everyone. Sarovam Badachari, Gopinath Acharya was here, Kasi, everybody. And then he asked Ramananda Rai at that moment, please examine it examine him, examine Rupa, I want to know what is his qualification. And it is known that Ramananda Rai himself, he was a Nataki, he was a poet who was writing the dramas. And then all the devotees, they read whatever Rupa Goswami composed, and Mahaprabhu said, please, all of you. And they were, they were stunned actually, they were astonished how he can write something, like, how is that possible? And of course it was possible because Mahaprabhu already had transferred everything. The wholesome pradaya, all wealth of Mahaprabhu went to Rupa Goswami. And then he asked all the present devotees, please now, you give him blessings. All the blessings you must give him. So that happened right here, where we're sitting. Also that case where Sanatana was coming back and then he got sores on his body, that also happened here. But like Maharaj said, so many pastimes. This is a very special place. So this time when we were going to Puri, I, asked, I approached Goswami Maharaj and asked him what is the proper way, how will we do Parikram in Puri, where do we start? And immediately he said, you must come first to receive blessings of Haridas Thakur, Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami in Siddha Bakul. And from here, remembering the mood of all of these Vaishnavas, because all of them, even though Rupa and Sanatana were from the highest, highest Brahman caste, Brahman society, they thought they lost their caste because of the association with the king, Muslim king. And Haridas Thakur, all of them were humbly staying away from the Jagannath temple, not entering Jagannath temple. Not, not only not entering, but not even getting close to Jagannath temple. Because they are thinking, if we get close, all those priests that are always around, going back and forth, serving Lord Jagannath, by some accident they might touch us, and then they will get continued, and we will get so many you know, will commit such a great offense. So they were staying here, so we are saying, remembering that mood, then we should approach Jagannath Temple, the Simhadvar, the main gate of the temple, thinking about what is our qualification. Like sometimes, you know, even Maharaj said himself, when he came first time, he tried to forcefully enter the temple. When he was 21 years old. He was 21 years old, yeah. yes. His first ever visit here. Then he was not very respectfully thrown away into the gutter of Jagannath Temple. Lots of mercy in the gutter, I believe here. And then he was met by Madhava Maharaj of Gaudiya Maharaj, Guru Maharaj's good brother, who explained to him, he said, Rupa Goswami didn't enter, Sanatana Goswami didn't enter, Haridas Thakur didn't enter, don't even come close to the temple. What is our situation? And by the way, it was a great fortune. He could have been met by anybody as he came out of the drain. But it was it is what I feel a So in that kind of mood, we shall proceed towards the Jagannath Temple and remain in that kind of mood during the whole Parikrama. Wherever we go, whatever we do, don't forget this is a holy dam, Purushottam Kshetra. And everything here serves Lord Jagannath. Birds, wind, sand, trees, flowers, people, monkeys, monkeys. 
Adraman, cows, everything serves Lord Jagannath. The only purpose for existing here for them is to serving the Lord Jagannath temple. And of course, many tourists come. But we're talking about the residents. And another, I mean, many leaders. Another leader with Sanatana Goswami was when Mahaprabhu called for him to come in the middle of the day in the summer. And you see, now is not summer, but in the middle of the day it's quite warm. And in the summer, in the middle of the day, the sand is very hot on your feet. And Mahaprabhu called for Sanatana to come from some place to come to him. And uh, then he came. Instead of coming up what's called Panda Rasta, Rasta means road, the Panda's Road, which is where the Pandas live um, who are serving Lord Jagannath, they're going up and down that road. And you know where is that road? You know where is that road? You were there today. And that road, Mahaprabhu, uh, Sanatana Goswami would not go up or down that road out of fear of brushing into one of the Pandas. And that road, we know until today, many of those buildings are the same buildings, original. original. And I know that because I was with Gurudev on that road, took Gurudev in their little car to his panda, to the panda on that road, and Gurudev himself telling about the house that we were in. Because we went up into the house, we parked the car, we went up stairs to the living quarters, which are upstairs, interestingly, where there's automatically some air, some breeze. And we were upstairs, it has some hole in the middle, and we are um, seated there, Maharaj is sitting there, and I'm sitting on the floor, and I'm leaning against just a pillar <laughs> on the floor. And the panda went downstairs to get some gorum jol, some refreshments, some sweets for, for Maharaj. And then it was just myself and Gurudev, and Gurudev said, that pillar you are leaning against is the same pillar Mahaprabhu leant against in one leela. And I said, this pillar, Maharaj? He said, he said yes. <laughs> and then I understood, wow, these houses, there. 500 plus years old. They're the same places and that house has some specific significance in the Leela of, of Mahaprabhu. So that Panda Rasta, Sanatana Goswami wouldn't walk, <coughs> walk up. Instead, he walked along the beach, which was the alternative way to go. And he got blisters on the bottom of his feet from the heat. And Mahaprabhu said, why you get blisters and <laughs> give yourself so much suffering? And Sanatana Goswami said, it's nothing. This is nothing, no kind of suffering compared with what would be the offense if I were to mm, contaminate any of the servitors who are going to serve Lord Jagannath. Such extreme humility. So this is our entrance, our allowance at all here is by the grace of Mahaprabhu, by the grace of Haridas Thakur, Sanatana Goswami, Rupa Goswami, all that section who are giving access to the highest quarter to the lowest personalities. So we pray for their grace at every step and praying here at the, the Siddha Bokul tree, then we pray that in remembrance of their pastimes here, in remembrance of their bhajan here, in remembrance of their generosity in distribution, that they may be kind to us to give us access. But Hare Krishna! On the panda subject, right? you know that they have different panda sections to accommodate all the Vaishnava sampradayas. So they have a certain panda serving, let's say, Nimbarka sampraday, another group of panda serving Sri sampraday, Vishnu Swami sampraday, Madhavacharya sampraday. So they're trying to accommodate everyone. Okay. So Gurudev had the Gaudiya sampraday panda. Properly. Hare Krishna. So, we can chant a little bhajan here? Okay, thank you very much. So let us sing a little bit of something that we know here. And Mahaprabhu, when he first came in Nabadeep, out from the house of uh, Srivas Thakur, and came onto the streets in Nabadeep, chanting Hari Nam Sankirtan, he first chanted, Hari Haraya Nama Krishna Yadavaya Namaha. This was his first chanting matter. So we can chant this here under the tree. And of course, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, which 
Nama Acharya, Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur uh, lived and preached and ideally presented to the whole world. Jai Shri Haridas Thakur ki Jai, Jai Shri Rupa Goswami ki Jai, Shri Sanatham Goswami ki Jai, Shri Shad Goswami ki Jai, Jai Shri Parvananda Puri ki Jai, Shri Saruk Damara ki Jai, Shri Ramananda Roy ki Jai, Sapa Shada Shri Man Mahaprabhu ki Jai, Sapa Shada Shri Nityananda Prabhu ki Jai, Shri Nitai Chaitanya Dev ki Jai, Shri Baladev Subhadra Jagannath ki Jai, Shri Harinam Sankirtan ki Jai. Srila Guru Dev, Srila Bhakti Sandhu Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj ki Jai, Srila Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Rokha Kridha Dev Goswami Maharaj ki Jai, Bhagavan Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasachi Thakur Kapupada ki Jai, Jai Srila Gokishoras Babaji Maharaj ki Jai, Jai Srila Satchitananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur ki Jai, Shri Harinam Sankitan ki Jai, Nitai Gaur Pemunan Dev Goswami Maharaj, Hari Harai.